guys, decentralized finance is on fire right now. I was at a crypto gathering this weekend and literally everyone was talking about DeFi and more specifically Compound. I swear at a certain point, even a dog was just barking, Compound, Compound, Compound. So I really wanted to make this video very quick for you guys to kind of just explain what is going on and also just to give you a general idea behind the hype. And 100% this video is not to hype up a certain coin or to hype up DeFi for what it is. This is very much an overview to tell you guys what some people have been doing and literally the stuff that people are doing with this platform right now, it just blew my mind because not only are they just using the platform for what it's designed for, but they're also exploiting certain mechanics to gain, to rack up those gains. And I'll talk to you, um, I think in this video, what I'll do is I'll explain what the general basis of what the platform is, the compound platform, but also some of the advanced crazy stuff that people have been doing. And in no way am I promoting this coin as well. It's utter insanity. It's gone up from 60 to $300 over the past week, largely due to a Coinbase listing. And it really played off that DeFi fever. It really gained, it was perfect timing for them to just blow this up at the certain time to attract this overall attention. And honestly, I don't think a lot of this can go on forever because some of the mechanics mean that literally you will get paid to borrow money. This is never the case. I mean, DeFi is about cutting out the middleman. So reducing the cost of traditional financial operations, like taking out a loan, buying a car. But at no point does it make sense to make money. So if you take out a loan to buy a new car, and not only are you not paying, they're just giving you money every month back. That makes zero sense whatsoever. But, you know, it's crypto. So apparently it does happen right now. So I don't think it will last. And guys, pay attention. The huge disclaimer going forward here. This is not financial advice in any form or the other. There's a lot of experimental stuff going on here. A lot can go wrong. This is my research that I did for myself to find out what was going on. But yeah, you guys have been warned. You can potentially lose everything here if you try these contracts and they blow up. So just understand this warning going forward. I hope this provides useful information for you guys. And if it does, remember to smash up that like button. Just pump that up and click the subscribe button for future videos to keep informed of what's going on in this space. So let's start off by explaining what is compound first. And I think the easiest way to explain it is that it's pretty much a bank. So if you're a user, you can deposit various cryptocurrencies like USDT, Ethereum, wrapped Bitcoin, etc. and earn an annual interest on your deposits. Exactly like if you deposit money in a bank. So just a quick look at the current website right now. So this is at app dot compound dot finance you can see the supply section and you can supply these cryptocurrencies and taking example of tether so usdt you'll get an annual percentage yield apy of 7.26 percent now this by itself is very enticing already because we have to remember that currently the federal interest rate is 0.25%, so a mere fraction of what these contracts are paying. So that's kind of the first advantage of a decentralized finance loan platform compound like this, is that it doesn't have to listen to the federal interest rate. It can do something completely different, and it's not governed by the same set of rules. What also makes this kind of special, actually very special, is that a decentralized finance platform is also, by its very nature, decentralized. So you can't really shut it down. So even if this goes against what the Fed is offering, what the federal mandated interest rate is, there's no way of shutting this contract down because there's no central party. And this is exactly what makes decentralized finance so interesting because it 
doesn't have to listen to any of these previously established rules. It's a new party, new kid on the block, and it's unstoppable by its very nature in its own DNA. I also want to make a special note here at what makes Compound so interesting is that it's non-custodial. So the funds that are being sent to this contract, you interact directly with another smart contract. You don't interact with a company or you don't interact with a direct user. This is extremely important. Even though it seems like a minor detail, having a non-custodial solution and a custodial solution that's whose rules are based on a decentralized network means that no one, no one person can just click the withdraw button and steal all your funds. Extremely important going forward. And in many essences, this is what makes DeFi so interesting and such a blossoming field right now. It's the very fact that there is no one party that controls it and you have the security of the network behind you. But of course, there are risks as well because you're not trusting a person, you're trusting code. There's in fact, no customer service, no overriding body to correct your mistakes. And more importantly, if the contract itself is under attack, say if they didn't code the contract correctly, then they might be vulnerable, very vulnerable to hackers. We've actually seen that with DeForce hack earlier on this year, where a hacker managed to exploit a smart contract and try to withdraw funds. And also there's other famous examples of decentralized organizations, which were also bled. So it's just an important consideration to, to keep in mind that right now we're still very much in the beta phase. And this is why there is some substance behind all this hype. Because I've done a video once before where I filmed the whole Hong Kong skyline. It's covered by banks. Banks are making a lot of money. And in many, in many essences, we can replace that with these decentralized financial contracts and cut out those middlemen. Now, back to the platform and to show you guys what's going on. So I loaded an Ethereum account with 500 USDC. So this is a stable coin backed by the guys at Coinbase. Now I can supply this to the decentralized platform and I'll get a meager 0.12 interest. It'll become a bit apparent why I'm doing this in a sec. I'll just show you this. And because it's a smart contract, I inter interact with it and confirm the transaction on MetaMask. Boom. Confirming. It actually does cost actually a dollar to interact in terms of gas fees. All right, that operation just completed and I've successfully supplied the balance of 500 USDC and I'll be earning a small amount, so 0.12 annual percentage yield on this. I've also flipped the collateral button here. So this allows me to use this USDC that I've deposited as collateral to take out loans. So this is where I can just go onto this side and start borrowing different assets like basic attention token, basic attention token rather, Ethereum, Augur, 0x, wrap BTC, whatnot. So this is kind of the intended purpose. You can use some of your crypto funds as collateral to take out other different cryptocurrencies. Now, you definitely have to also pay. So if you borrow, you've got to pay. It's a loan. So for basic attention token, that loan is quite expensive. That's almost a 30% annual percentage yield. You got to pay 30%. I think that's even worse than credit cards right now. And for something like USDT, or Augur, you're paying like USDT, you're paying 13%. So this is how the platform also makes money because there's a spread between the annual percentage yields. So the deposit and the borrows, the platform can hypothetically make money in that way. It's providing a banking service after all. So on surface level, that's pretty much the platform. There's a supply, a deposit, almost a savings account, if you want to call it. And then there's a borrow account where you can lo loan various cryptocurrencies. All right, totally off topic, but I just ran downstairs and I managed to snap a few photos of the current solar eclipse going on. So, so you can't really see it directly from the sun, but you can see it from the reflection. There's a little kind of arc shape there. Not sure if you see it, biggest solar eclipse in Hong Kong, at least for the next decade. Anyways, back to the crypto side. It's not crypto if there isn't an associated coin. So. Yes, there is an associate coin with this project. It's called Comp, and it's kind of what makes everything go crazy right now. Because typically speaking, if this was just the structure, it kind of looks like a bank, operates like a bank, not too interesting. But 
with this coin here, people have managed to find ways to exploit the system. So take, for example, what I have set up right here. So I deposited a $500, not $500, $500. And then I also, just right now, I borrowed 300 USDT. So it doesn't sound like much. And in fact, my net borrowing rate, net effective interest is negative 12%. But what else is going on here is that I'm also gaining comp. So I'm earning comp every single block for doing so. So it turns out there is a calculator to calculate what the hell is going on. So say, for example, I deposit at 500 USDC and I withdraw 300 worth of USDT. Technically, I have a negative interest rate, but because of the comp distributions, I'm actually earning 13% back annual percentage yield. This is utterly insane. This is unheard of in any other industry or any other space other than crypto. I'm literally getting paid to take out, to borrow out a loan. And this doesn't work as a business, honestly, because if there's a bank that just literally pays you to take out a loan, hey, you want to buy a house? Instead of paying money back, we'll give you money. <laughs> that doesn't work, right? But currently it does because right now the speculation of comp is so high and the value of comp tokens is also through the roof as well. And there's even more ways to game the system because the amount of comp gain is directly related to the interest that's being paid on the platform. And now that takes us to insanity, which is comp mining. So not earning interest on the platform. They don't care about the interest on the platform. They just care about getting as much comp rewards possible in the shortest amount of time possible. One of the websites is on um, InstaDAP. There's ways to even fold this 4x. I won't explain this too much in this channel. I think it's way beyond the scope of what I want to talk about here. But people have been essentially finding ways to deposit USDC, borrow USDT, convert that USDT to USDC, save it in again, leverage that, pull out USDT, and then shove that back in and fold it four times. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So it almost sounds like this. Some people are using this to use extreme leverage, both lending and borrowing, racking up those fees, but at the same time gaining a large amount of comp in the process. And I do have a word of warning here. There is a liquidation clause as well. So if whatever you borrow starts going up in value and your collateral isn't enough to, ju to justify that, then the platform will just liquidate you outright. And I've even had a few friends that were liquidated as well, and they've lost quite a bit of money during the liquidation process. Didn't want to go into too much detail. I'll make a further video in the future if you guys want to request that, if you want to request information on how and what happens in this case. But just keep in mind that you don't want to over borrow and over borrow on this platform, or you're going to face the consequences relatively quickly. So now it's for some serious talk. Honestly, there's a lot of excitement into DeFi. There's a lot of innovation here. And I actually see at the end of the day, this is just the beginning. I mean, at its current point already, <laughs> $751 million have been saved into compound deposits. And I think a lot more can be go saved in other systems like MakerDAO, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's so much out there to look at. At the end of the day, they are going to eventually destroy the banks. Banks make a lot of money being the middlemen, providing the exact same services and building these giant structures, giant organizations to make money off our backs. So I definitely see that this is one way going forward. That being said, though, of course, right now there is a lot of hype for DeFi. I mean, at the end of the day, even a comp token went from 60 to 300 dollars and if that isn't raising any alarm bells i don't know what else should there's definitely a lot of excitement going on a lot of exuberance and i think at the end of the day it's important to know what is happening but i personally did not jump and buy the comp token in fact right now i am experimenting with the platform so this isn't my only account mining the comp token and I personally, what I've done is that I figured out how much comp I have. I'm, I've actually applied a short on comp. So I'm shorting the current value. I'm locking in my gains using FTX. If you are interested in FTX, currently they are jumping on the DeFi bandwagon. They've got 
Perpetual Futures for Comp. They've also got their DeFi and Bow token and also speculation on the CUSDT as well. If you guys want to sign up, the sign up button is down below. But yet again, with all these exchanges, it's highly leveraged and highly dangerous. So I don't recommend this for people who don't understand what they're doing. So that's my current position right now. I'm not a comp holder by any means, but I definitely feel like looking at the platform and looking at DeFi space overall is important. So if you guys have any other suggestions for other DeFi projects to look at, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. We'll be making a lot more videos about this in the near future. And I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. I know I touched upon some of the tricks that all these whiz kids are doing with the Compound platform, but also I skimmed over a little bit of the details. So if you guys want more details, if you want to know more, leave a comment as well. I'll try to fill in that for sure too. And guys, of course, if you guys like this video and you found that informative, make sure you smash up, pump up that like button and click the subscribe button as well. I'm keeping I'm giving a lot more information about DeFi in the near future and that way you'll be informed. So guys, thank you again for watching. See you in the next video. And if you guys want more updates on what's happening, we got the podcast Bitcoin out of the box. Definitely that photo definitely doesn't make me look like a scammer there. But anyways, we got the new season, season three coming right up right now. The latest episode is with Sash Goptal. He is a fellow content creator, co-founder of Old Coin Buzz. They have over 200,000 subscribers on the channel. He's been ridiculously successful investing in all coins as well this year. And we'll talk about some of his strategies and what he thinks about all this like 100x mentality going on. The podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anything you name it. You can listen to it on your go, on in your car, if you go anywhere in coronavirus season. But it's there and I'll put a link down below.